Hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining, listening or watching to us from. Uh, my name is IOT. This is another episode of the Home of Nigerian Football Podcast. And with me, as always, I have a special guest, um, a player for the Super Falcons of Nigeria and for Sevilla Femenino in Spain. Um, I'm talking about Tony Payne. Tony, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, um, it's been a busy 2023 for yourself, you know, just like many other Nigerian players. Um, and I want to have the opportunity to catch up with you, you know, find out how the World Cup went for you, how you're doing. Um, so, yeah, how, how has the time been since the tournament ended for Nigeria? Um, what have you been up to? Yeah, I would say, you know, based off of how we got out of the tournament, it's been a little bit tough, um, you know, because... Obviously, it was my first World Cup, and um, Nigeria, our team, we put up a really good performance, so we were all really disappointed in how it ended for us, but um, on a more positive side, it's it's been really good. I'm just super grateful for the experience, and um, if anything, just extremely motivated to be back with the team and um, for the you know next chapter of the Super Falcons. No, amazing. Um, and I mean, you already preempted what I was going to ask you next. You know, your first World Cup. I mean, most fans, you know, most people would have predicted that you'd be a part of the squad. But in life, nothing is guaranteed. You know, so um, how how did you feel when the list was published? You know, you got that call to represent the Super Falcons. You know, how how did that make you feel? Yeah, I think um, for me, just. As a young girl, being at the World Cup is something that all of us say, you know, it's like I want to, first it's I want to maybe growing up in the U.S. you say, oh, I want to play for a college team. And then it's, oh, I want to play pro. And then there's always like, I want to play in a World Cup for a national team. And so that's always been like my goal. And I felt like I would have accomplished so much if I met that goal in my football career. So um, like being able to do that with Nigeria was just, and you know, just amazing. So that was extremely, it was extremely amazing. I, you know, I'd been with the team two years prior to, you know, the, the tournament. So, um, of course nothing's guaranteed and I was just extremely grateful to get that call. And I was with my parents when the list uh, officially dropped. So they were really excited and, um, yeah, it was really amazing. No, nice, nice to hear, you know, and congratulations to you, of course. Um, just wondering, how, how do you get the information when you're going to be part of the squad? Is it something that the coach had called you maybe like a week before they announced the list to let you know? Or did you find out like the rest of us, you know, um, when it was published? No, um, you know, we found out, um, I, I want to assume a, a little bit earlier, um, you know, we were all put in a a group message and you know um, was added with all of the players and we got a message from the coach saying we'd officially made the team so um yeah that was um that's how it happened and yeah it was really awesome just to finally you know get the official confirmation it was really good nice nice and um getting selected to represent the team i mean in the past your sister was also part of the super falcons team you know she went to the wafcon you guys, um, you know, played together. Was there any bit of maybe sadness that, you know, I mean, she's still young. She will go to the World Cup eventually. I can predict that now, you know, but was there a little bit of just sadness that, oh, you wish you guys could have gone to your first World Cup together? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, playing in a World Cup with a sibling would have been just, you know, an added uh, bonus to the whole experience. It would have been amazing to experience it with um, my family member. and. Yeah, I think one thing that she has on her side is time. Um, she's still extremely young. She's only 22. So um, she has, you know, many more World Cups and um, top tournaments to play in. And yeah. she's just now started her professional career with PSG. So, um, you know, she has so much um, growing and learning ahead of her. And I know that, you know, by the time it's the next World Cup, she will be, you know, in in the best situation to make the team and perform well. So, um, yeah, I think there's no um, limit to what she can do. 
So I'm, 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 I'm honestly really excited to see what the future holds for her. Nice. And um, I love how you're driving the conversation because you're just setting me up for my next question. Oh, um, that's good. <laughs> people, people just signed for PSG. You know, I mean, anyone that watches football knows that PSG is a top team, especially in women's football. You know, they achieve a lot. They compete in the Champions League. I mean, they're perennial champions in, in the French um, Division One. Um, getting that kind of news for your younger sister, you know, um, as the older sibling, how proud do you feel? Because um, based on, you know, my experience with most people, the younger sibling typically looks up to the older sibling, you know, wants to achieve what you achieve. And for your sister to be able to sign her first pro contract with a very top team, how, how does, do you feel like you did a good job as a big sister? Yeah, um, I, you know, it's always just, um, I feel a huge amount of pride um, just being able to see my sister, you know, sign for such an amazing team. and. She deserves all um, this, all the opportunity, and I'm just so happy that um, a big club recognized her qualities because she has such a future and um, she has so much potential. So I think um, it's truly amazing, and you know, obviously playing in one of the best clubs in the world, she's gonna um, improve and she's gonna, you know, turn into an amazing player. So um, yeah, and you know, I we grew up um, training together. So, and especially going through it myself, like when I signed my first pro contract, um, just being able to, you know, watch someone else do it. Someone that you trained with was just, it was really cool. So I'm, I'm so happy. No, amazing. Great to hear. And congratulations to Nicole. Um, once again, you know, I was also, I'm not, I don't, I'm not even part of the family and I, I felt so happy <laughs> when I saw the news because I just love to see Nigerian players, you know, playing at the highest level, playing for big clubs. Yeah. So it, it was it was amazing to see. Um, okay, let's let's move um more focus now on the women's world cup that just took place. Um for context, people that are watching, we're recording this on Sunday, the um twentieth of August. Spain just won the title. Um, but let's talk about um the preparation that we had. Um for many fans, you know, myself included, I'll be honest. Um we felt like before the tournament, like, why were the Super Falcons not playing any friendlies? You know, why are they just in camp? Um, mm -hmm. For you as a player, is that something that you really cared about, you know, or did you already feel like, no, we're good, you know, we're prepared for the tournament? Yeah, I think it's, um, for me, it's a kind of mixed feeling. I think, you know, we've played so many international matches prior to the tournament. So I didn't really feel like we were unprepared at all I think you know it's just an added bonus if you can get an international a, a, a good quality international match before um, the World Cup starts now that being said you know you come at risk of like injuries and you know you're at risk of injury every day but um, yeah I think you know obviously with how we performed it it ended up not being a, a huge game changer for us and if anything what really mattered was just training together for a long period of time and um, just preparing that way. And um, obviously the friendly match we played, um, um, you know, wasn't really at this, it wasn't the same level, but it was still good to, you know, get a game, get an official game. And so, um, yeah. you know, and it obviously turned out well. No, I mean, it, it turned out well. Um, so let's talk about um, moving to the team camp in Brisbane. I mean, um, I saw photos, I saw videos from several players, you know, of the nice hotel rooms that you guys were put in. Um, overall, you know, from your perspective, how did you see the reception from the Australians, from the Africans, Nigerians in Australia, and just, you know, the, the whole setup for your, for your camp? Yeah, I, I was really impressed, you know, with the World Cup. You know, I haven't been in, it's my first one, so... I don't know how, you know, the treatment of the players was in the past. I assume very good, but, you know, upon each tournament, obviously FIFA's going to improve and federations are going to improve in terms of how they, um, you know, watch teams. And so, um, yeah, you know, Australia was it was an amazing host. Um, the fans were all, you know, as you can see, um, sold out stadiums were extremely excited about, you know, the World Cup being there and, um, walking as a team outside of the hotel, even though we were playing Australia, we were getting good lucks, um, and, you know, just congratulations, even when we beat Australia. So, 
um, yeah, it was a very, it was a very great environment in Australia. Oh, amazing. Great to hear. And shout out to Australia. Um, did you have any concerns about the time difference? Um, you know, considering like your family in the US, for example, they have to be up at 3 a.m., you know, 6 a.m. to watch your games. Was that something that you were concerned about? Or did you, what, did you know that for sure, no matter what, you know, they'll, they'll all be up watching you? Yeah, I, I think I was um, a little bit at first, but, you know, my parents are, are uh, you know, this is something they're super excited about. So I knew that they would get up and it wouldn't be a problem for them. But, yeah, it was a little bit concerning with the time difference, you know, for the rest of the world. Um, either it being like 2 a.m., the match is 3 a.m., or it being like extremely late. But um, for at least, I would say, one or two of the matches, I was able to get, you know, a lot of support from people I knew were able to catch the game. So it ended up, it was good, yeah. Oh, yeah. So and I, and I ask that because, you know, myself as well, I had to be getting up at 3 a.m., 6 a.m. to watch the games. I mean... It it wasn't fun getting up, but you know, you you ladies, you made you made it fun, you know, watching the games and seeing how well we're performing. Um, so it was it was worth it at the end of the day. Um, let let me ask you about the first game that we played in the tournament, um, against Canada. Um, I live in Canada, so I was watching, unfortunately, on Canadian TV. Um, and they were so confident, they were so cocky. Um, you know, it was it was very annoying to watch from my own point of view because. They were so sure that they're the Olympic champions. You know, they have the best team that they've had in a long time. They have top players playing for, I mean, credits to them. They had top players playing for top teams, you know, and they were um, almost so certain that they would beat Nigeria. Um, within yourself and within the rest of the squad, leading up to that game against Canada, did you have any doubt at all um, that you could face this team and beat this team? Um. Speaking about Canada, you know, no, you know, and that's based off of, you know, playing them. We played two friendlies with them, I think it was last year, a I year think. ago. Yeah. yeah, last year in February. So, um, you know, we knew, we knew Canada, we knew how they were going to play. Um, so it wasn't really much of a surprise. Um, mm. If anything, what we were surprised, I think, would be um, just kind of like us, you know, like, how are we going to? play because obviously it's a different squad than when we played them um but you know I think the whole team in general we felt extremely prepared um you know playing the teams in our group we knew it was going to be hard but um you know after we got after that result against Canada we you know our fears went away in terms of our group I think Mm. amazing and um let me ask you about your role a little bit. I mean, we saw you play for your club. You play as a forward, you know, right wing, sometimes on the left wing. We saw you play at the WAFCON. You played as a defender. Um, and then now, you know, going to the World Cup, you're playing in that number 10 role, you know, that's creative um, attacking role. Which of these positions, you know, do you enjoy the most, um, you know, playing in? Yeah, um... Anyone who like knows me and I can think has played with me for a long time knows I have a soft spot for the number 10 position um, just because I grew up playing the 10. It wasn't until I actually got to um, pro in, in Ajax that I started playing on the wing and forward position. So, um, yeah, you know, I've, I've always played the 10, so, you know, it felt really good to be back in that position. And of course, um, you know, I didn't even know what position, you know, Randy um, had in mind for me of this tournament, but I was in more in my mind prepared that, you know, I would be in the position that would be the most needed because usually that's where <laughs> I've been yeah. put in the past. But um, yeah, it was, it was obviously so fun to, to play in the 10 and I'm, I'm so happy that I was able to play there. Mm. And I made my you... dad happy too. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, it's, and, my I'll dad be... was gonna have a stroke, I think, if if I played in uh in the defense <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> and, and I was gonna ask you. That's what I was trying to ask. Like, were you also happy that you didn't have to play as a defender? Because I mean, defenders love to defend, 
but if you're not a natural right. defender, I assume it can be frustrating for you to have to favor him. Yeah, you know, for me, I, you know, when you get to the international level, you know, there are a lot of players who play out of position, but um, yeah, I was, you know, I was prepared for it. I was mentally preparing myself yeah. beforehand, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm very much glad that I did not have to play <laughs> defender. It's not my favorite of the yeah, positions. I can imagine. Um, okay, um, still, still in that game against Canada. I mean, it was a very nervy game in a sense. I mean, we had a good performance in the first half, solid, you know, compact. Um, and then early in the second half, we go ahead and concede a penalty. You know, like three minutes into the second half, um, as a player on the field at that time, what is going through your mind when we concede that penalty? So, if I remember correctly, I remember them because I didn't I saw the action but I thought maybe it wasn't a penalty and so for me I was just kind of like okay I'm not really sure it could be but if it is you know I think it'll it'll be fine like there's still time it'll be fine and then even as you know uh, Sinclair was taking it and Chiamak was on the line I had no like there wasn't really any like fear. It was just so calm because for some reason I knew that Chiamaka was going to save it. Um, mm. And of course, like first game, super crucial moment. Like I had a feeling that, you know, that was going to be like one of the highlight moments of the World Cup for us because obviously Chiamaka saving that penalty changed the whole course of this tournament for us, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just and and I think a lot of people on the team felt that as well. Like I remember talking to Efi and she being like, "Yeah, I was like not stressed at all. I knew she was going to save it." And I think like that energy and obviously God being on our side like you know kind of like helped that. Yeah. No, I, and I I also think it was a game changer. Like for me, I was screaming, you know, when she saved that penalty and it was it was from that moment that I understood and I just felt like, okay, the Super Falcons are serious, you know. Like, it just yeah. gave me that extra boost of confidence that, nah, 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 we're, we're in this competition for real. Um, because, I mean, I don't know if you saw, but before the tournament, um, a lot of people did not really have confidence in you guys. You know, uh, a lot of people, I, I had people that I spoke to that said, oh, if they get one point, I'll just be happy. You know, some people said, yeah. oh, they can't get a win. Um, of course, comments, that's valid. I think it's valid because... Um, you know, leading up to the tournament, we didn't win very many friendlies. Um, we didn't put up the best performances. And then obviously the performance in WAFCON wasn't, you know, what everyone expected. So, um, yeah, and I think that also probably drove us to, like, gave us, you know, more of a push to, you know, really prove to everyone that, because we know, like, our capabilities as players, but being able to demonstrate it to everyone else, I think, was ex one of the main like points for us. Like we really wanted to show that. No, oh, amazing. Um and um finally on the Canada game, I mean late in the game, our youngest player, who had a fantastic game up to that point, you know, Deborah Biodo unfortunately gets a red card. You know, as a fellow pro, you know, watching a young player make her World Cup debut, have a fine game for 90, 90 plus minutes. And then get and then get sent off. How how does that make you feel? You know, did you say any words of comfort to her? How how did you help her to pick herself up? Yeah, um, obviously that's really you know devastating for her. And um, yeah, red card. You know, definitely especially because it was so unintentional and she'd had such a great game prior to the incident. Um, yeah, it was very you know sad for her. Um, but you know. She, uh, everyone on the team was extremely supportive and we all gave her a hug after the game that, you know, um, we still, you know, got the result. Um, everything's going to be okay. You know, we were, a lot of our, you know, motivation to moving on through the tournament was, um, you know, due to her three game suspension was, you know, getting to the next match so that she could be back with us, have everyone in the squad. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't know if you have an opinion on this, but personally, I felt like three games was a little harsh from FIFA. I mean, yeah. I, I know it was it was a foul. It was a red card tackle. You know, we have to be honest. 
but like you said, it was very unintentional. You know, she was trying to play the ball. It wasn't like foul play or anything too crazy. Right. Um, and for her to get three matches, I, I felt like it was a bit harsh. Um, yeah, I think, you know, um, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say. I think you already know. But, um, you know, especially because the player, you know, was still playing like she was fine. Um, she played the rest of the tournament. Um, so it wasn't a career ending or tournament ending tackle. So I thought it was, I thought it was harsh, but yeah. I guess that's how it is. Yeah. They make the rules. What can we say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Let, let's, let's move on to the second game of the tournament um, against the host nation, Australia. I mean, their country was fully behind them. I mean, we had a similar experience in Morocco, you know, when we played against the host nation, um, but it being the world cup, did that add any extra pressure? you know, um, playing the host nation in the World Cup? Um, you know, I kind of looked at it like this. Like, yeah, there's pressure because obviously everyone is supporting Australia, everyone in that stadium, minus maybe a thousand people <laughs> were supporting Australia. And I thought, if anything, the team that has the pressure is them. Mm. So, you know... We, you know, we'd seen them play multiple times. Um, we didn't have a chance to play them prior to the tournament, but um, yeah, we knew who were they, who they were gonna, um, how they were gonna come out, and I think also who their key players are. You know, they obviously have a really good team, but um, for us, there weren't um, very many surprises or anything that we needed to necessarily worry about um, with Sam Kerr being out, unfortunately, um, but. Yeah, you know, we didn't feel a sense of, of pressure. If anything, it gave us a little bit of confidence. Right. And um, the game against Australia still, we conceded a goal on the stroke of half time. I mean, as a fan at that moment, I was like, oh, man. You know, because in football, if even if it's a tough game, you always want to go into half time with the score level so that you can, you know, re-strategize, come out in the second half and do better. But the the focus from the team, you know, just the drive from the team to equalize still before the halftime whistle was something that I felt was incredible. You know, how, you know, being a player that was on the field at the time, how did you pull that out of your, out of yourselves, you know, to still not feel down, not feel like, oh, maybe, you know, we're, we're about to throw this game away and, and be able to equalize right on the drop of halftime? Yeah, um... Obviously, it would have been a natural reaction for us to kind of, you know, put our heads down. But um, I think once the goal conceded, we came together as a team and we kind of we pinpointed exactly what was the issue going on in the game for us, you know. And um, if I remember correctly, it was we needed to win more of our second balls. So, you know, when it's a 50-50, just making sure that we're on it. And I think um, that's you know, the kind of shift uh, that we made as well. Like we also um, decided to press them, um, put them under pressure too um, defensively. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I know that getting that goal right before half was just, you know, I mean, it was the game changer. It was everything. And and speaking of game changers, I mean, um, we were without Rashidat um, and Halima Twainde in the first game and then they came into the second game um Rashidat was involved in two of the goals against mm -hmm. Australia how much did they coming back into the team you know help to improve the team and help to drive the team forward yeah I mean they're incredible players and it was definitely a loss not having them in the last uh in the first game against Canada um but yeah you can tell um you know they made all the difference um in, in the game against Australia, Holly Matus, obviously she's a, an amazing player, an extremely skillful midfielder, and just um, a very intelligent player. Um, and then, you know, Rash, um, she brings so much creativity, and um, her attacking prowess is just, um, is, is at a top level. So, um, yeah, I mean, hey, I, you saw the game, so, you know, how you yeah. can can give your own analysis on them, but <laughs> they played amazing. So, and they yeah. had amazing tournaments. Everyone no, did. 
Um, and then, I mean, Osnachi Ohale goes ahead to score the second goal. And then, um, you know, Oshuala, it's, it's, as I said, I always think her story is very interesting with Nigerian supporters. Um, because I remember, um, spoke to a lot of people after the first game. People were criticizing her. You know, that's just the way, I guess that's the way it goes when you have the quote-unquote star play and you're the one that everyone expects to deliver. You know, oh, what was she doing on the field? And then um, Coach Randy um, puts her on the bench for the second game. Um, she comes on the, off the bench, um, 64th minute. We score the equalized, um, well, like we take the lead just a minute later. And then, you know, just cue that moment in the 72nd minute. You know, she gets the ball from a defensive error, round the goalkeeper, back of the net. How, how did that feel, you know, for you as a player on the field at that moment? We go three one up against Australia. How how was the feeling in your body at the time? Yeah, I mean it was obviously euphoric. Um, you know, just just the whole atmosphere um, and the excitement from you know everyone. I think even the fans just um, extremely you know just maybe a little bit confused, but then also excited. And um, mm. it was obviously a very exciting match to watch. So. Um, for me, um, being inside the field, it was it was just amazing, and I think you know we scored three amazing goals, and um, yeah, and I think that was you know our best game of the of the tournament. Um, besides um, besides England, we played um, a really good match as well, and so um, yeah, I yeah, there's not much to say. It just it all seems kind of still a blur to me because it happened so recently and it was just yeah. so amazing. So, yeah. And and speaking of um, Oshawala's goal, you know, her celebration was one that went viral. Yeah. Um, would, would you ever take off your shirt if you score a goal <laughs> like that? Um, I think no, I never. I, if, it, if it's me, I, I, I'm extremely awkward. I would probably struggle to actually get my shirt off and it would just be like... <laughs> so awkward um and then I, re- I remember the game against Ireland after that situation the refs came in you know to do their normal checks and they said you know um the rules like no shirts off if you take your shirt off normally it's a yellow card but they said it's going to be a directly red card and we we're all just kind of like okay <laughs> um, but yeah so no that's not for that I don't think that's for me <laughs> No, I mean that's that's funny that they would say it's a red card, um, but but yeah, um, I just thought that was one that was interesting, you know. And I, I'm not surprised you said no. I don't know. I I get like sometimes when I see you, I'm like you seem like a little shy. I don't know. Just sometimes I'm like I don't think she'll she'll be able to do something like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just okay. I just see too many videos of like celebration fails, and I said, okay, that's just never right. gonna be me. <laughs> so, so what is what, what would you say is your go to celebration? Um, usually I would just, you know, run to the crowd, like hug my teammates, like, you know, do a little kiss of the crest or something like that. Like, you know, simple stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Let, let's move on to the game against Ireland. Um, at this point, you know, we have, um, four points on the board. Final game of the group stage. Australia are playing against Canada at the same time. Um, and we know that we need at least a draw to go through to the round of 16. Um, but a win is going to put us top of the table for the first time ever. You know, did that game, you know, end up being our toughest game in your own opinion? Um, even though we're playing an Ireland side that had already lost their first two matches and we're out of the competition. Yeah, I think we, yeah, for me, definitely, I knew Ireland was going to be the toughest game. Um, I don't think, you know, just... Because, like, Ireland, they are just such a passionate team. Like, when I saw them play against Australia in the first match, I was just looking, wow, like, they are just, you know, like, this is their tournament. Like, they're really going for it, you know? Like, um, you know, you could just see, like, how they were playing, just the hunger. And so, you know, those are the, in my opinion, the worst teams to play against um, because not only are they also a good team, they're just extremely hungry. Um and, you know, they just have this mentality. So um, especially it being the last game in, of the group stage, they hadn't picked up any points and they didn't want to go back um, home without, you know, some things. Um, so, yeah, I knew it was going to be tough. Unfortunately, we didn't get the win to top the group. Um, but, you know, 
that point was all we needed. So it was fine. Mm. So um, you didn't feel any sense of maybe slight disappointment that, you know, ah, oh, we, we should have won the group. Um, you know, you just felt satisfied with what we had. Done. No, I, def I was definitely a little bit disappointed just because, you know, when I look back at the game, um, we, I felt like for a lot of the game, we were on top of them. We were just missing that finishing piece. Um, mm. We just couldn't finish. So, um, yeah, it was disappointing. And, you know, we always want to do our best and we always, you know, not only did we just want to like make it out of the group, but we wanted to top the group as well. That would have been, you know, really amazing for the team. No, and, and that's the way football is sometimes, you know, it just seems like when, when people face us, that's when they choose to have their best game. Because <laughs> I remember the Irish goalkeeper made a fantastic save from, um, I think Uchi Nakano's header. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like, like, why is it today that you're choosing to play this well, you know? Exactly. Um, it was, it was so frustrating. I mean, but ultimately, um, we qualified from our group and in my opinion, you know, even though some people were quite critical of the team after that game, I felt like, um, we had to be pleased because normally when we go to this tournament, you know, I've been watching Supercons and World Cup for a couple tournaments now. We struggled to qualify, you know, um, in 2019, we had to hope that another team loses. You know, we qualified as one of the best third place teams. Um, but this was the first tournament that we qualified with some relative ease. You know, um, our fate was in our own hands. Um, so I was quite pleased with the um, performance by ladies. And even though, yeah, we, we did not score, you know, in two of the three games at the group stage, it was a, it was a thing of, you know, we had the moments to score for whatever reason. And um, I remember in the first half, you know, Asisat even had one fantastic chance. Um, that she could have converted. And on, you know, it's one of those things that on any other day, you know that she's going to score, you know, but just on that day, um, it somehow didn't go in for us. Um, qualifying as the second place team from our group, you know, meant that we're going to face England in the round of 16. Um, England, who honestly, I felt like in their first two games of the tournament, they were okay, they were decent. Um, but then in their last game, you know, they went ahead and they thrashed um, China 6-0. And then that brought this whole sense of, oh, wow, you know, we're going to face this team that scored so many goals. Lauren James had just had the game of her life. Um, so everyone was talking about her. Um, again, people started to lack belief in the team, saying, oh, man, there's no way. How are we going to play this England team? Um, did you feel any, you know, type of way about it, any pressure um, about facing England? Or were you still confident in the ability that the team had? Yeah, I think, you know, there's, for me, and I think the rest of the team, of course, we're nervous because we now get to the knockout stage and we want to keep advancing in the tournament. But for me, at least based off of the group that we had, it already being so tough, we didn't feel like we were, you know, oh, it's just, you know, we're not prepared. We're playing this, you know, amazing team, you know, this European champions, like, um, no, um, you know, we didn't feel that at all. We felt extremely confident. Um, I remember, you know, meetings prior, we were just, we knew we were gonna, you know, press them. Um, we knew that we were going to be protagonists in the game, um, as well. So, um, yeah, you know, it's obviously it can be intimidating to play against, you know, European champions and then, you know, Olympic champions or even like prior World Cup champions. But, um, I think, you know, and also based off of how this whole tournament has gone, that the gap in women's football has closed significantly and that, you know, it's not easy to win these tournaments and it's not easy to win these trophies. So it doesn't matter what team you face. Um, it's going to be a challenge and it's going to be a fight. Um, you know, maybe their game against... China wasn't the best uh, representation for us, or I guess gauge in terms of how our game would go. But um, I think football is a game of moments. Um, when looking back, I think China also had, you know, some opportunities that could have, you know, changed the course of the game. And, um, you know, in, in football, you just never know. But, um, yeah, that, that, that's my opinion on it, at least. No, yeah. And, I mean, um, that game against England, again, it was one of those days where the ball just wouldn't go in for us. I mean, Ashley hit the crossbar, you know, with a fantastic strike. 
few seconds later, she has another shot on target. I mean, we we bust England in that game. You know, I've watched the Super Falcons win titles. I've watched the Super Falcons win games by four goals, by six goals. But in my opinion, that was like the best game that I had watched. The team's performance, you know, we matched them every step of the way. We even better them in many moments. Um, being one of the players on that team, how did it make you feel um, to have put in that kind of performance, you know, during the game? Yeah, it was. Um, it was it was just amazing, you know, like just the pride and you know just being able to show that you know we can play with the top teams in the world and show that like we deserve to you know be amongst the top teams um so yeah obviously it was amazing and we were just just happy that we were able to represent Nigeria well you know because especially with all the doubts um, prior to the tournament and did you feel like that was your best game of the tournament um no I would say that wasn't my best game um but you know like football is a game of moments you know I had some I had some good moments and um, some not so good, but, you know, I, I overall, I don't have any regrets with, you know, the tournament in itself. I, I'm, I'm just very happy that I got the experience. Mm. So, so which of the games did you think you, you were at your best? Um, I think Ireland maybe was mm. my best game, I would say. Hmm, interesting. You, I mean, you did. You definitely had a good game against Ireland, but that England game, you know, you created seven chances. I, I for mm-hmm. me, I still look at, I still look at it like that's so unprecedented. You know, um, you don't, you don't see that happen where one player is able to create seven chances in a game, and I mean, the all-round team performance was just fantastic. Um, the job that um Halimatu I did did on Lauren James was yeah. was so great. You know, frustrated her so much that she had to stamp on one of her players. <laughs> um, I, I, and I get herself sent off. In the game. It was I was just so happy because um I remember there's someone that I had a conversation on Twitter with, you know, and the person was telling me like, oh, which who on our team can even deal with a player like um Lauren James? Like, oh, she's going to kill our squad. And I remember telling him, I'm like, have you heard of Michelle Alozier? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it just so happened that you know she ended up starting up and she got the red card so immediately that happened i just tweeted back at him like i told you you know and I mean, it was it was a fun moment for us um did you feel like we should have done more with the one player advantage that we had after the red card yeah of course um you know you work on a lot of situations you know that can come up, you know, along the tournament. I think us going, if anything, we were always working on us being a man down, just knowing, you know, our past histories, we had, (laughs) you know, just an insane... I I think we are the most recorded team at the World Cup. Yeah, so... (laughs) um, Yeah, so I think um, it came as a little bit of a shock that we were going to be a man up and... Yeah, looking back, we could have, you know, really taken more advantage of that. But, you know, that's football and it's it's a sport for learning. All sports are. So, um, you know, I think moving forward, we'll, you know, I think we'll be even more prepared for things like that. And um, were you a little bit maybe sad that the coach pulled you off six minutes before? you know, the shootouts. Would you have wanted to take a penalty in that game? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, uh, coaches have, you know, their tactics and their plans. Um, I can see that we wanted to play more direct. So um, I think that could have been, you know, I'm one of the shortest players in the team. So I think <laughs> that could have been um, a part of it. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think what was a little bit also an added disappointment was that I, um, didn't have the opportunity to step up for the team and um, take the penalty, but um, it is what it is. And um, yeah, so hopefully next time, ne- hopefully next time you won't be in that position at all. I hate penalties. I think it's just who decided that this would be the decider. I think we should just keep playing until someone scores. <laughs> until someone scores. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I hate penalties. Um, 
um, just because for me, it's just for me, I, it's 50 50 at that point. It's just whoever in that moment can just can just get it in. So, yeah. No, oh, yeah, I mean, um, it was it was a very frustrating end, you know, to the tournament for us. But something that happened, you know, um, has not been seen, I would say, since I've been watching Nigerian football, either the male team or the female team, you know, we lost that game. But the reaction from the fans, you know, from the media, on social media, everyone was like, I'm proud of the team. You know, normally once we lose a game, uh, Nigerians go crazy with the insults, <laughs> you know. But yes. we lost this game and everyone was just so happy and so proud. Um, did that make you feel good? You know, did, did that motivate you or inspire you even more that, the, you know, the country was entirely behind you guys like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and us knowing past histories, we were surprised with the with the overwhelming support. And um, I think it was deserved. And we're just happy that, you know, Nigerians like still have faith in us. Maybe not until we, uh, you know, put up our performance in the in the group stage. But of course, you know, that's what you have to do you have to prove yourself. And, um, you know, we're just happy that we were able to like make Nigerians proud at the end of the day. No, yeah. And I mean, for me, it was an incredible turnaround of opinions, you know, from people saying that um, we would be lucky to even get one point in the tournament. All of a sudden, <laughs> they are saying, oh, why didn't we beat England? You know, we should have beaten England. And I'm like, yeah. wow, <laughs> the ambition had, had grown so, so much. And, you know, it was definitely down to how you girls had shown yourselves um, during the tournament. Um, we, we showed that we can compete with any of the best teams in the world, you know, and that was really, I think, amazing to see. Um, again, football is all about moments, you know. We could easily have won that game. I mean, look at England. They just played in the World Cup final. That could have been us, you know. Who knows? Um, yeah. But, but yeah, um, looking forward, you know, to the future of the Super Falcons. I mean, we have Olympic qualifiers coming up, you know, in a bit. We also have the next WAFCON um, coming up as well. What do you think are some of the steps that the team needs to take to even be able to raise this level, you know, one step higher? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just figuring out, you know, all the other details besides, you know, the players, you know, a little bit apart from the football. Um, you know that there's an overwhelmingly... It's an overwhelming amount of drama that comes with the Nigerian team um, in terms of like money and payments and, you know, coaching. So I think if we can get all of that squared away and figured out and we come to some agreements, I think it's going to, I mean, it's only going to make the team better and it's only going to, it's only going to help the team moving forward. Um, I think it's unfortunate to have those type of, distractions going into important tournaments and then also being in you know games and stuff so I think if we can find a way to just only have to focus on the football part moving forward it's it's obviously going to be amazing for the team no I mean that that would be ideal I hate to burst your bubble but I I mean knowing the NFF I, I can say if you can't, I, I don't see much of that getting so unfortunately. Um I'm not a big fan of I mean of the way we run our football in the country. Um but at the same time, um I always have to give close to the players, you know, um in spite of all these difficulties and the situation, um the drive that you know you guys show to just keep on fighting for the shirts um is is so amazing to see. Um on a on a scale of one to ten, um overall. How would you rate the performance of the Super Falcons at this World Cup? Um, so you want me to do like a number rating or what? Yeah, a number rating, yeah. Okay. Let's do out of let's do a out of five. I'm able to do a rating like that easier. So I give us I would give us a four. A four, a four. rating. I would. No, yeah. I mean I and I, I would agree with you. I would agree with you. It was it was a fine fine performance. I mean, um, we did better than a lot of teams would have expected. I think at the after the final today, um, I saw someone publish the rank of um, all the teams in the tournament, and they placed us ten. Um, you know, and I'm like, okay, fair enough. Um, we finished in round of sixteen, so I can understand why they wouldn't put us yeah. as one of the top teams. 
Um, but I also think like it's time for FIFA to put some some respect on our name, you know, and not not put us down at forty because almost every time I look at the FIFA World Ranking, I'm like, we'll beat this team, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. why, why are we so um, down here? But yeah, yeah. So I'm, I I I need to do a little bit more research in what goes into the FIFA rankings, but um, yeah, I think I'm hoping after this tournament, you know, we 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 move up and. Yeah, just continuing to, you know, put up these types of performances outside of, you know, the World Cup, I think is going to be super important for us too, you know. Um, so, and obviously we can, you know, we had an amazing team and there are also a lot of amazing players that were left out of the squad and players that were in WAFCON um, who, who ultimately didn't make the team that are also amazing too and will probably definitely be back. So, um yeah, I think sky's the limit for us, really. Oh, amazing. Um, final question about the World Cup. Um, this was the first World Cup that FIFA had explicitly, you know, said they were going to pay the players for participation. Mm. Um, a lot of people said, ah, that's why the Super Falcons played so well. Ah, they had to fight <laughs> for their money. You know, do you, do, you, do you feel like the money had, you know, gave that little bit of motivation or do you think, you know, even if there was no participation um, bonus attached to this, we would still have been able to perform at the same level? Um, well, let me ask you this. Right. Let's say if we think about men's football, do you think money plays into performances and, you know, results and motivations? Do you think that? I mean, the men have all sorts of performance bonuses, so I would say it does, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I think it's the same for us. Obviously, this, you know, bonus appearance fee money that people agreed to pay us was obviously amazing. And, yeah, of course, like, who doesn't like money? So, <laughs> yeah, of course, it was an added motivation. But, um, you know, it's also just, like, the pride of it all, at least for me, like, for the longest time, I didn't even think you could really make money playing football. It was just for fun. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you always want to just put up your best performance and make it and just win the trophy and hold the trophy and just be, you know, one of the top teams. But, yeah, of course, like, um, yeah. it's nice to have it. <laughs> no, of course, of course. Of, of course, it's not. I mean, nobody doesn't like money, so that's <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so I think I've exhausted the questions that I had about around the World Cup. Um, now looking forward to the next few weeks, the next few months, um, you're yeah, back in Spain now, you're going to be playing um, with your club in a new season. Um, do you have any personal goals that you've set for yourself to achieve? You know, maybe you want to score 15 goals, 20 goals, get 10 assists, you know, what kind of goals do you have for yourself? Yeah, so um, me personally, I... I, in terms of like personal goals, I, based off of my position, yeah, I want to score, you know, at least like 10, um, at least have 10 assists, um, but I try not to put too much pressure on myself um, with that kind of thing, but um, yeah, just to, you know, have a solid season, just to play well, um, yeah, and just improve, you know, I've been with my club for five years and you know each season we improve little by little in terms of our standings in the league so for me um, it's always been my dream to play in the Champions League so um, you know if Sevilla could could do that that would be amazing for me so um, yeah I think just to do well with with my club yeah mm. and um after the World Cup performance that you had, you know, and the entire team had, was there any club that maybe was trying to poach you from from Sevilla? You know, because I mean, I, I'm just imagining um, the World Cup is always an eye opener for a lot of you know people. I mean, maybe somebody would have noticed, oh, this Tony girl is quite good. You know, let's bring her to the team. Was there anything like that? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I obviously I can't tell you that, but um, <laughs> I think you know, for everyone in the tournament, you know, it's the world stage and. You know, I think a lot of teams are watching. So, um, you know, it's obviously an amazing opportunity, an amazing platform to, to show yourself. So I think, you know, you can see a lot of players in, 
you know, I've been picked up um, to great teams. Um, so, um, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I didn't really expect you to answer, but I just I just had to ask. Um, <laughs> and I guess for any Nigerian fan, you know, or maybe even just a fan from around the world that supports you and supported you at this tournament, um, what would your message be to them? Yeah, so, you know, I always like to say that you just never know um, where life can take you. And just believing that whatever you have in your mind um, is possible is just the game changer. I think, you know, with the course of my career, um, there's there's always going to be doubts. But just having that, you know, little inkling of hope is what's always going to, you know, push you through and just to work hard, but just to know that whatever you want to achieve um, with hard work, that it's definitely possible. Definitely. Mm. And um, what would your message be to your parents, you know, with all the support that they showed you as a young girl, you know, to have now played in your first World Cup, what would you say to them? So I would say, parents, thank you so much for believing in me. Thank you so much for all the money that they had to pay, to <laughs> all the hours of driving um, me to, you know, my games and my tournaments that um, hopefully, you know, it's all paid off um, that I was able to, you know, reach my dream and my goal of playing in the World Cup. So just like things that I love them and uh, hopefully they'll have um, another sibling, another one of their kids playing in it too. Yeah. And I mean, hopefully we get to see you in the next. I mean, you're still young enough to play in the next World Cup. I mean, or even maybe another two. Who knows? Um, maybe oh, wow. <laughs> you have no. a lot of faith in me. No, <laughs> oh, no, I, I honestly do. I mean, at least the next World Cup, I would expect to see you there. And, you know, if you keep performing at this level, you know, I mean, I know that you're very fit, you know, and you keep your, your yourself well. So there's no reason why you can't go for two more. That's, you know, <laughs> that's, what, I, that's what I honestly believe. Well, um, thank you. But yeah, um, thank you very much, Tony, for, for your time today and for speaking with me. Um, always a pleasure. Um, congratulations again on the performance at the World Cup. Um, we'll keep supporting you. We'll keep watching your games. You know, and hopefully um, the best is even yet to come for Tony Payne. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.